All right, let's keep going on our way here. We're going to calculate the rest of our networks here. So we'll calculate network number four. To calculate network number four, we're going to convert the number four. So now what I'm doing here is I've just written the network number we're calculating in front of our address. Convert four to binary, which is one, zero, zero. Fill it into my borrowed bits. Put all zeros in the host portion to give me my network address. And now I know what network number four is. I can keep counting. Now I'm going to skip the step where I do the first host, last host, and broadcast address because that just repeats itself. First host is going to be the network address plus 00001. The last host is going to be network portion plus 11110. And my broadcast address is going to be network portion plus 11111. So we're going to skip that from now on and just calculate the network address. So if we want to do network number 5, I convert 5 to binary. I put it in my three borrowed bits, put all zeros in the host portion. I calculate network number 5. Do the same for 6. Convert 6 to binary. Fill it into my borrowed bit section. 110 is 6 in binary. And really, to reiterate this, what we're doing is we're taking these three bits and we're kind of pulling them temporarily out of this address. And we're looking at them individually. All right, We're only looking at those three bits and calculating the value of those three bits exclusively. So 110 in binary is the number 6. Once we have that number 6 and we stick it into our three bits, then we incorporate it into the entire address and use it accordingly. So a lot of calculating these addresses is a matter of perspective about what number you're calculating when. This takes practice. We're going to continue on. We'll calculate our last network here, which is network number 7. So we convert 7 to binary, which is 111 in binary. We then assimilate that network portion into the rest of the address, where we have all zeros in our host portion. And that becomes network number 7, which is our last network. We needed eight networks, though, didn't we? Yes, we did, but we started counting with network zero. So let's go look at what all of our network addresses are that we can assign to each one of our sites in our network. To do that, once again, we're going to convert these eight bits at a time. If you haven't caught on yet, I keep repeating myself through this process. The behavior you need to use when you're learning subnetting is actually written on a shampoo bottle. It's rinse, wash, repeat. So you just keep doing this over and over and over and over and over again until you get the right answers. The good news is, is we have seven additional problems that we can go through. And we're going to go through those step by step. So let's convert these to decimal and see what each network address is. So I have network 0 at 203.0.113.0 slash 27. Network 1 was 203.0.113.32 slash 27. Network number 2 is dot 64 slash 27. Number 3 dot 96 slash 27. Number 4 dot 128 slash 27. 5 dot 160 slash 27. 6 is dot 192 slash 27. And network 7 is 203.0.113.224 slash 27. If I go then and apply each one of these network addresses to each one of my sites, I now was able to take network number 203.0.113.0 slash 24. I was able to change my subnet mask by borrowing three additional bits to make my mask a slash 27. Once I did that, I was then able to count my networks in order to find out what each address is so that I could then assign each address to each one of my networks throughout my environment. So this wraps up the introduction to subnetting. I highly recommend you going through the workbook and working on this first problem on your own and figuring out each one of the calculations for each network. If you have troubles, come back and watch the video again. And as you're watching the video, Find out what the answers are. Pause it when you need to. So while you're working on the problems, pause the video, check your answers, 
or do your work and then restart the video and see if you're on the right track. I really look forward to seeing you in the subnetting examples video as that's where we're going to do seven more problems of subnetting so you can really get the hang of this. So thanks for watching Introduction to Subnetting and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks.